Hello, my name is Gabriel. I am the executive director and co-founder of West African Medical Missions and I'm going to be taking you through orientation one. Uh, one of the things that you're going to learn as you come to be part of West African Medical Missions is that everything that we do is pretty innovative. We're always trying new things and that we work in a virtual environment domestically. So you're going to be very used to and accustomed to interacting with people just like you are now um, through your computer, uh, over the phone in our virtual conference room, but everything that we do and we do together, we do virtually. Um, once we are working abroad, we're working in the physical sense, we have our office there, we have our hostel, we have our projects that are actively working on the ground, but domestically we interact virtually, and this is your virtual introduction and your orientation. I'm going to be taking you through our history, our mission, our vision, and our values, and then I'm going to give you some of our mottos so you can tie it all together pretty simplistically. Um, the history of the organization is, as I was a junior and undergraduate studying neuroscience at the University of Minnesota and had an interest in pursuing global health. Um, I wanted to go into medicine, but I also knew that I needed to do some medical volunteering abroad. And having uh, my father come from West Africa gave me a reason to go to West Africa. I just wasn't sure which country I wanted to go to. So I spoke to him and said, Dad, you know, I want to go volunteer in West Africa. Which country should I go to? Because he was born in Sierra Leone, um, but has Liberian heritage and a few other countries are mixed in there as well. And he let me know that it was my grandma's 80th birthday in Sierra Leone, who I'd never met. And so that was kind of the selling point. Um, you know, it would be great to go meet my grandma, celebrate her 80th birthday, and then choose that as the country to, you know, first start working with them. So after I'd chosen to go to Sierra Leone, I started looking um, at options and opportunities that were there as an undergraduate student, and there was nothing. Um, Sierra Leone existed with some of the worst health outcomes in the entire world, but yet there was nothing for someone eager like myself to go make an impact um, in the health setting over there, and I just couldn't understand it. Um, so as I was speaking with some students in the uh, student interest group in neurology co-sign that I was president of, they let me know that if I was able to go over to West Africa and create an opportunity, they would come the next year and participate, and that kind of gave me the energy to go try something new. So I finally found something that I thought of is equatable to the morals and ethics and values that I have for working abroad, and it was uh, the voluntary work camps of Sierra Leone. And it was put on by um, the National Social Security Administration in Sierra Leone are the ones who ran the camp. And what we did is they flew out people from all over the world to come work in a village called Mabruve. Um, and we worked to clear roads, um, cut down elephant grass. It's like 10 feet tall to make it so they could plant more crops in the village. And... You know, the, the second day that I was there, I had a travel journal, and in my travel journal it reads, met this cool guy, Frank. You know, and Frank is the other co-founder of the organization, and he's the guy that right away, he was a Sierra Leonean, he was an uh, English and literature teacher, that we just clicked. You know, he was wondering what I was doing there, and I told him I was trying to do something within... Um, the capacities of health to create an opportunity for students from colleges in the U.S. to come over and to help out. And he was like, that is something huge that we need. And from there, we just went back and forth. Me telling him about the experiences I had um, volunteering in hospitals for over five years, um, working in uh, the emergency room doing research for two years in Minneapolis, and how I was hoping to bring those skills, that knowledge and understanding to Sierra Leone to create a platform for students to be able to really work with uh, Sierra Leoneans to improve the health that was there. Um, after the camp ended, for after a month of the camp, um, I was able to meet with a few people in the government, um, present them with a proposal and be given the ability to go view hospitals throughout the country to see where the most um, logistically feasible place for a program would be. Long story short, I ended up um, shadowing Dr. Andrew T. Mana at Connaught Hospital in the emergency department, and he was the director of the department, and I saw that as a place that would be the easiest to translate the skills, knowledge, and understanding I had from my health experiences in the U.S. 
to um, the situation in Sierra Leone. You know, working in two different emergency room departments, I was able to correlate a lot of things that I knew students could do that would relate to some of the things that were needed um, in Sierra Leone. After working for about a month and a half under Dr. Uh, Dr. Moana, um, I was also working at Prince of Wales School, the school that uh, Frank was a teacher at, because they had um, been donated computers and a solar system and had internet access, which is really hard to come by um, in Sierra Leone, and I was given the opportunity to use it for free. And so as I'm sitting there thinking of how to create a program that was working in a clinical setting, I couldn't uh, ignore the fact that this school and these students were so open to helping me, and so I also wanted to incorporate something that had um, an educational component in it as well, because many of these students that I was interacting with we're going to be the future leaders um, of the healthcare scene in Sierra Leone. So I thought it would be very intrinsic and important to have them involved. And so after about two and a half months in the country, uh, Frank, myself, and Dr. Mana had really worked to create this document called the Educational Liberation Initiative. And in the Educational Liberation Initiative, it proposed a variety of tasks that would go on, um, three of which are the Young Scholars Program, the Institutional Strengthening Program, and the Research Associate Program. These three pillars are now what we call the Global Health Strengthening Model that WAM uses to strengthen the existing health capacities in the countries that it operates in. The Young Scholars Program uh, works with high school age students who want to go into um, the field of health and what we created it like is comparable to like NASA space camp that we have here in the US for students who are interested in uh, you know science astronomy and being an astronaut we wanted to create a program that had that the same uh, lure for students interested in becoming nurses or physicians or just working in health administrators and the whole goal of the Young Scholars Program is to strengthen uh, community health literacy. The second program is the Institutional Strengthening Program. That works to strengthen uh, institutions who interact uh, with health or social justice in a sense. Um, our biggest partner right now is called NetHips. That's the Network for HIV Positives. And NetHips works to um, manage all the donor aid and care that comes to people living with HIV and distributes that out to everybody through support groups. The last program is the Research Associate Program, which works to link um, collegiate level students with uh, physicians and clinicians in Sierra Leone who are interested in pursuing research projects to improve the practice of evidence-based medicine. Many physicians uh, use a variety of hats. You know, they will be the director of a department, be working in the ministry, um, be paid for to do a project by an NGO, and then also be an educator. And so for them to pursue research projects, focus on um, improving the practice of evidence-based medicine is almost uh, something that's a huge challenge. So what we try to do is um, network local students either in med school or college uh, with clinicians interested in these projects and provide human resource and technical support enabling them to be able to pursue these projects with much more ease and efficiency than was previously there. So that's kind of the gist of um, the history of where we came. That was 2009. Now it's uh, 2014. Um, we've since grown to be um, in a few different places in Sierra Leone. We have a project that we're working on that's in Uganda through one of our partners and incubators, Mesha. Uh, we're hoping to be in Liberia this year. So it all came about from Frank and I just working together and deciding how we could um, come together to create an impactful program that would really um, push the health of Sierra Leone forward, starting with the people first. So our mission, our mission at West African Medical Missions is to strengthen the existing health capacities of West Africa through education, community empowerment, and civic engagement. And the Global Health Strengthening Model 
it revolves around the fact of you know using education um, in the classroom setting to get students to be able to become health leaders um, focusing on community empowerment by a lot of the community outreach initiatives students do as their final practicum in the Young Scholars program. Getting students engaged civically in these institutions that work within health by volunteering their hours by gaining professional experience but then also helping these organizations to increase their efficiency. Our vision is to become the most effective organization cultivating local cures to health disparities and inequalities afflicting West Africa. Um, there's many traditional ways of knowing and understanding how health is created and defined that are now um, being wiped out by the Western biomedical model. Um, we are not against, you know, the ways that Western biomedicine um, has helped to create many treatments for a lot of the diseases that are afflicting West Africa, but we are also aware that our, there are traditional ways of knowing and understanding disease that are now being diminished. And so we want to find a way to create hybrid systems of knowledge between this uh, Western global medicine and the, um, the traditional ways of knowing and understanding. And our students are really key in doing that. They're the ones who already know, um, you know, the stories that are passed down and are able to correlate when we're talking about um, the pathway of how malaria infects the body and affects the liver cells and how that can kind of relate to some of the things that are talked about in some of the stories and creating ways to establish new stories to spread that knowledge, um, therefore improving community health literacy. So our values are health, equality, leadership, innovation, education, sustainability, youth, and gender empowerment. Everything that we do revolves around health. We um, are very focused on increasing the ability for people to access health. Health is not just in the sense of um, anatomical and physiological health. There's also financial health, um, you know, and that's something that we have a few new projects that are uh, working to address that. Equality, we would like to make sure that everybody has um, equal access to the decision-making processes that occur within the organization and that we also work to create equality in the places that we work with. For example, um, our board of directors uses a few different committees to create strategy for how we're going to move forward and those committees are open to anybody in the organization um, so if you're interested in why it is that we're going to work in Liberia this year you know you can join the global committee that meets and have an active role in participating in that decision-making process at the board level even as an intern and you know that's something that we really pride ourselves and try and make accessible to everyone and that is equality uh, leadership is key to everything that we do. If we're working in a virtual environment here, we need to be leading the people that we're working with to understand why it is that we're doing things. Um, and then also providing leadership opportunities for people in the countries that we're working with. Um, being independent and having uh, characteristics of leadership will make it so when they see decisions that need to be happen, that need to happen, they know what to do to um, bring those to fruition. Innovation. Innovation is key to strengthening existing health capacities. A lot of the times what we're doing is we're looking at programs and projects that have already been set in place and we're innovating new ways for them to increase uh, their value. Um, innovation is the only way that that can really happen. Education is pinnacle to us being able to have sustainability. We need to be educating everybody that we're working with so that when we have these ideas about how value can be increased, they're educated to be able to uh, scale those values and understandings up. Sustainability is one of the core concepts of what it is that we're doing. We work to find local sustainability by um, creating local health leaders to be able to run, operate, and take over and direct programs that we work with in the way that they see fit. Lastly is youth and gender empowerment. Um, 
the youth are the future of this world and of the countries we work in and by empowering youth to become leaders by innovating ways that they can um, further educate their communities in a sustainable way we're going to be able to strengthen existing health capacities gender empowerment is our big focus this year three-fifths of all of our operations we want to be uh, biased towards involving women and young 